네, 오늘 기어, 어, SSL의 공식 디스트리뷰터인 그의 기어라운 지혜가 주시하는 어, 오늘 매트릭스 그리고 엑스렉 세미나에 오신 것을 감사드리고요. 오늘 상당히 여러분들 진짜 운이 좋으신 것 같아요. 여기 이렇게. 그 멀리서 날아오신 네이선 헤르난도 씨를 소개시켜드립니다. 안녕 audio consoles. We started off making control systems for church organs and this was done using solid state electronic and logic gates, hence the name solid state logic. And it was a very revolutionary system that Colin designed. Uh, it was used in a lot of the biggest cathedrals and churches in the world from the, this is the Royal Festival Hall in, in the UK, Royal Albert Hall. And this is the Southern Baptist Church in Memphis. So a lot of the world's biggest, most prestigious cathedrals all have solid state logic um, systems. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's the, the, these That's two right. photos are the Royal Albert Hall okay. in the, the UK, Royal Albert Hall in London, and the Southern Baptist Church in Memphis. And yeah. there still is a solid state logic church division, but it's a separate company now. And they're based in the, mm. the, the United States because most of the big churches are there. Mm. Uh, as an interesting aside, it, the, the system actually uses time division multiplexing, uh, TDM. So it's the same basic technology that is inside Pro Tools, but in a much earlier form. It's, it's a way of sending multiple channels of data down a single cable. So, <laughs> funny haircuts from the <laughs> 1970s. But this is Colin here with the big shirt collars, the guy who started, Colin Sanders was the guy who started SSL. And Colin decided that he wanted his own recording studio. And Colin <coughs> was probably what you could be fair to describe as a very eccentric Englishman. He was extremely clever, and, but slightly strange. He decided he didn't like any of the mixing desks that he could buy, so he decided that he'd build his own. And so it's known as the Acorn console. And there's a famous phrase in, uh, in English that from small acorns, big trees grow. Now, it's, it's very interesting, uh, even this first console, how similar it is to the consoles that we made for the next 30 years. It's a, it has uh, dynamics on every channel, which nobody had ever done before. It was the first console ever to do it. Now, Colin, as I say, built this just for himself. But yeah. <laughs> engineers kept coming to, to hire the studio and kept trying to buy the console from him. So he sold the first console and built himself another one. <laughs> By the time he'd sold three consoles, he thought, maybe there's something in this and I should start trying to make consoles rather than just have a studio. And this is how the SSL that we all know today started. In 1978, we released the first commercially available console, the SL4000B. Um, we're not sure what happened to the A, I think. <laughs> there were a few very revolutionary concepts in this console. Number one was dynamics in every channel. Number two, it acted as a remote control for the tape machine. And this was, again was the first time this had ever happened. So it allowed the sound engineer to stay sat in front of the console and control recording, punching in, dropping out, and not having to rely on a, uh, an operator for the tape machine in the machine room next door. In, in this, these days of Pro Tools, we all take for granted that you can have an edit window and a mix window and instantly change between them. 
but this was the first time that an engineer could actually do both processes sat in one place. The, another revolutionary thing on this console was it was the first console with a computer-based automation system. So it had a small computer inside and allowed you to create uh, automation for the faders so you could record your fader movements. <coughs> Before this console, you used to have to get all of the band. Everyone take one fader each. <laughs> right, when it gets to the verse, you've moved that way. And which allowed the engineer to start to do a mix as a performance and really advance the creativity of mixing records. In 1981, we released the 4000E. Now, we know there wasn't a 4000C or D, because Colin didn't like those letters. Now, what this added was uh, is total recall. Uh, it was the first ever console with total recall, which means you could record all of the settings, save your settings, and come back to them later. Uh, Total Recall is actually a registered trademark of SSL because we invented it. Again, in today's <coughs> modern world, we all take for granted that when you open a session in your DAW, that everything comes back and sounds exactly the same as when you turned it off yesterday. But before this console, there was no way of moving between projects. So what this allowed to do, allowed engineers to do, was say come to London and track you know, uh, Abbey Road with the London Philharmonic, and then take the two-inch, you know, reel of multi-track reel-to-reel <coughs> and the 30-centimetre floppy disk with all the data for the console and go to another studio in, say, New York to mix with a different engineer. As long as they had the same console and a tape machine, then they could move between studios. Bearing in mind where we all now have phones in our pockets that have computers that are more powerful than the ones on the rockets that went to the moon. In 1981, the computers looked like this. So he was really pushing at the boundaries of the technology to get it to be able to do all the things that he was doing. The funniest thing is the recall screen on a duality is basically the same thing. It's, it's now much nicer graphics, but it doesn't look that different. Throughout the 80s, SSL became a very big company. I mean, when it first started, there was four employees. Uh, due to all the innovations, it became very successful and grew very large. And then in 1989, we released the G-Series. And this really became the new standard for recording you know, studios. By this point, it became almost unviable to run a studio without an SSL console. If you had a large studio, the record companies and the producers all demanded that you, you could have it. Certainly any studio that had more than one room would almost always have at least one SSL room. Now some people think that us starting to make outboard and smaller processor is a newer phenomenon, but we actually released our first outboard in 1991 is the SSL bus compressor, the uh, two mic pre and EQ stereo, like so two mic, two mic pre's and two EQs, like a channel strip. So it's all the circuits from the G series console. Now, after releasing the G series in 1989, the G series was uh, designed as a low noise console. So it was designed to be. Now it's funny. There's lots of plug-in emulations of E-Series, and everyone talks about the legendary E-Series, and it's become very famous. At the time, because the tape machines were noisy, uh, G-Series was designed to be l less noisy than an E-Series. But this wasn't enough for Colin. So after the console had been released and was out and you know selling very well, uh, Colin called all of the chief designers together and into a big meeting and presented them with a blank piece of paper. So despite having the most successful recording consoles in the world, he told the engineers to completely forget all of the designs that they'd already done and to start from scratch on brand new designs. So he set them the task of being able to design a console that when you stood behind the console listening to the band, it sounded exactly the same as if you stood with them in the room. Uh, so he wanted a console with no coloration and no distortion. It took the, the design team four years 
to come up with the first product, which was the 9000J. They then spent a further eight years refining that design. So over the life cycle of the 9000J, there was lots of small modifications to the console to improve it. Now, the last ever 9000J was sold to Abbey Road Studios in London. At this point, they decided they were happy with how far they'd uh, gone with the design and they, they felt they'd perfected it. Uh, and this is what became the 9000K. So the, the one in Abbey Road is, is a K, but it's still called a J. But all the Ks were the same as that one. And so the K series was released <coughs> in 2002. And this is what all of the modern SSLs are based on those circuits. In 2004, we released the AWS. <laughs> this was the first ever analog console that also worked as a controller for your DAW. So where our earlier consoles worked with the tape machine, by the time studios were replacing tape machine with the DAW, we made our consoles work with the DAW instead. Now around this time, uh, with Pro Tools becoming more powerful with extra DSP, people were starting to talk about, for the first time, really being able to mix in the box. And it became the buzz of the new thing was going to be mixing in the box. So the, 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 9000, the 900 was designed as a compact tracking console. And the, the original concept would be that you would track through the console and record everything into Pro Tools and then change the console into DAW mode and mix inside the computer. But what we found when people bought them and were sat behind them, they track through and they come to the time to mix and they think, well, hey, I'm sat behind a lovely sounding SSL. I'm going to start to bring elements back out of the DAW and start mixing part of it in the analog domain. So, and this was really the start of what we t now term hybrid mixing, where part of the mixing is done inside the computer and part of the mixing is done on the analog domain. And this has become the, the most common way that people are making records today. This has become the new standard way of, of working. In 2005, SSL acquired new owners. The guy on the left is called Dave Engelke, he's a technology pioneer. And the guy on the right is a guy called Peter Gabriel. Peter started out as the lead singer in Genesis and then went on to be one of the biggest worldwide selling recording artists as a solo artist in the 80s with uh, worldwide hits like a record called Sledgehammer, which was his most famous hit. He also worked with a, a, a very young girl called Kate Bush, who just literally last month in London has just done her first concerts for 30 years and it's been a huge story in the UK that Kate Bush has done her first concerts in 30 years, she's very, still 30 years later very very famous and he kind of helped make her famous and Peter was always a very pioneering musician, he was one of the first ever musicians to use sampling one of the first musicians to use digital recording and there's a very famous advert in America and the UK for Remington shavers, electric razors. And the advert is that Mr. Remington saying, I like the product so much, I bought the company. <laughs> so we quite often joke with Peter that he's the Mr. Remington of audio. Yeah. In 2006, SSL <coughs> released our first product for computer users. So this was a <coughs> DSP-based solution that gave you 32 channels of SSL processing within your DAW. As computers have got faster and faster over the years, we've now actually um, changed over to, do, uh, to native versions and you can run many, many more than 32 just on a laptop now because computers have got so much faster. In 2008, we released the first version of Matrix. Now, by this point, the studio market was changing. Now, Record companies were making budgets smaller and smaller and smaller due to online file sharing and everything we all know about. So what we found is a lot of producers who traditionally would have just gone to a commercial studio and done whatever project they were working on there were all starting to build their own smaller rooms to work in. Uh, so they may still go to a bigger studio to record drums and strings and get the main 
stuff down, but they then take it back to their own place to be able to do additional work, you know, editing, overdubbing, uh, you know, processing. And talking to many of these producers, most of, all of them have a fast computer and they all have, you know, loads of plugins. Everyone has UAD, Waves, all the great, you know, DSP, all the same. So everybody has the same plugins. But what we found is they then have a select choice of nice outboard, which is what would help define their own sound. Because right. every plugin sounds the same as every other producer who has the same plugin. But when you start to buy outboard, yours will sound unique to you. So SSL, the, the Matrix was designed to be the analog heart of a small project studio. To marry the workflow of the computer environment with the analog environment and combine them together with a very, very tight integration. In 2009, we released Nucleus, which contained a lot of the... Um, we, we, with the Matrix, we introduced a lot of very deep control of the DAW. And so with Nucleus, we used all of that technology we had developed to work on a product designed for someone who primarily works completely in the box. It's designed as a complete solution, so as well as being a very clever DAW controller, it also has two mic breathes from the bigger console, and analog monitoring, and a sound card, all combined in one unit. Just add a laptop and you have a small SSL studio. Right up to recently, we've now released Sigma, which is a remote controlled analog mix engine. So it's the, it's the analog heart from an AWS console put into a rack mount box that, be, that can be controlled by your DAW. The thing that makes this different to every other dumb summing mixer is that we can control the levels of every single channel directly from your DAW. Okay. So this has 16 stereo channels and they, it receives the automation data from Pro Tools or Logic. Or so whereas on a traditional summing mixer everything is always fixed at 0 dB, with this you can start to automate and you're much, it's much more like mixing on a console rather than just doing summing. And for the future, you're going to have to wait until AES in a few <laughs> weeks' time to see what we've got coming. So before my voice completely disappears, I'm going to hand over and say thank you for listening.